Battalion School of Electronic and Mechanic Engineers. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day here at Wembley for the 2012 Johnston's Paint Trophy. Swindon Town against Chesterfield, of course. Both teams treading the uh, turf at Wembley in this final for the first time, becoming the 34th and 35th different teams to grace the final. And whichever team wins will be the 21st different winner of the trophy that started back in the 1983-84 season as the Associate Members' Cup. Chesterfield coming out here to a fantastic following of around 20,000 supporters have made the trip down to North London. There's around about 30,000 from Swindon Town as well. Swindon beat Barnet in the regional final. Chesterfield beating Oldham, of course. And uh, what a differing set of league season they've had really with uh, Swindon Town at the top of League Two, led by Paolo Di Canio there. Chesterfield at the foot of the League One division. The Swindon fans come in expectations. They've played once at the new Wembley before and lost. They played three times at the old Wembley and won every time. There was Spyrite's record is one win and one defeat, both in the playoffs, 90, losing to Cambridge United, of course, and 95, beating Berry. The teams, Jack Lester leading the Chesterfield team, being introduced to Steve Pocock, the general manager of Johnston's Paint, Greg Clark, the chairman of the Football League, and Maxine Trotter, the director of fundraising for the league's chosen charity this season, help the hospices. And Steve York uh, here on commentary with me. A great day for everybody connected with, well, both teams, but particularly Chesterfield, of course. Yeah, absolutely. It's always great that uh, teams like Swindon and Chesterfield, lower league sides, uh, can get to a, a fantastic stadium like Wembley. And uh, as you said, Bill Chesterfield, uh, this is the uh, third occasion they've been there. Uh, one win, one draw, so let's hope it's good news at the end of today. But uh, it's good, a great day for the supporters, and it's a great opportunity to actually have a bit of silverware. Sheridan Jr. there, the uh, Chesterfield mascot. There's the silverware that the two teams will be playing for this afternoon. Red ribbons and blue ribbons on it, but at the end of the match, at the conclusion, whether it's on uh, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, or after penalties, it'll only be either blue or red. Alan McCormack there, the captain of Swindon, in the... Uh, well, de deputising really for Paul Caddis, the normal skipper who has had an ankle injury for the last few weeks and didn't quite make it, in fact turned his ankle in training yesterday and that kept him out of the final, big blow for the team from Wiltshire and there on the end Matt Ritchie who's the danger man, the League 2 player of the year this season had more shots on target I think than just about anybody plays on that right hand side and Chesterfield seen him at close quarters his days with Dagenham and Redbridge and Notts County, of course. Greg Clark, the league chairman, being introduced. And, well, so much of the attention pre-match has been on that man, Paolo Di Canio, and I think that's to Chesterfield's advantage. Yeah, certainly. It, it, it deflected the attention away from Chesterfield. Di Canio draws the limelight, there's no doubt about that. And he's certainly played in uh, the Ladies biggest stages of Wembley when he's played in Serie A. Will you please be well, uh, upstanding the singing of the national, national anthem is in anthem. safe hands because it's going to be led by that young lady there, Olivia Safe. So Olivia Safe getting us off to uh, the start really and here's the Chesterfield uh, team line N Nathan Smith coming in uh, at left back of course Liam Reinhalch ineligible Jack Lester captaining the uh, side alongside Jordan Bowery up front and perhaps the only surprise selection Frank Moose uh, relatively uh, recent loan signing in the centre of midfield 
Yeah, that's right. It's nice to see Nathan Smith getting a game as well. And uh, also Simon Ford in the starting 11. No uh, Neil, um, Neil Trotman this afternoon either. So uh, Simon Ford gets a start, which hasn't been done much lately. Cup tied, of course, the uh, skipper. As for Swindon Town, well, I'm absolutely amazed they've given James McEverly at uh, left back a start. The only sign on uh, Thursday on loan from Barnsley. And I would think that the uh, normal defenders, the likes of Callum uh, Kennedy and uh, Alessandro Cibocci, who often play at left back, I wouldn't have thought that's gone too, uh, gone down too well. Benson and Connell, uh, strikers that are well known to Chesterfield. Connell scored in the last FA Cup tie at Saltergate when he was with Bournemouth, but had to drop out of the league to find some form with Grimsby, but back with a vengeance. But as I mentioned early on, really Matt Ritchie down the right-hand side. John Sheridan, Tommy Wright, Mark Crossley there, all with Wembley experience behind them. Crossley saved a penalty from Gary, Gary Lineker, no less. Tommy Wright won in the uh, playoff final and uh, John Sheridan a scorer in a cup final win for Sheffield Wednesday against Manchester United so that experience will no doubt uh, go a long way to calming the Chesterfield players in the build-up to this game whereas Paolo Di Canio never played at Wembley apart from in a charity match apparently. Yeah that's right uh, John Sheridan you mentioned John Sheridan and uh, uh, Mark Crossley and Tommy Wright for that matter but experience at Wembley as players but not as managers and experience as, play as players at the old Wembley not the new Wembley so there's there's one or two uh, variables in, in among that uh, at the moment as well Phil but certainly they'll, they'll be there to enjoy the day and they'll obviously be hoping to bring in this, this trophy back home with them John Sherry looking very smart in his Greenwoods uh, suit I'm not seeing his uh, too close up on the, on the shoes that were provided by Greenwoods of Chesterfield so referee Tony Bates from Stoke a big Speedway fan apparently in uh, Alan McCormack and Jack Lester doing the uh, formalities. McCormack very often a midfielder, as is Oliver Rissa, but they're both playing in the heart of central defence for Swindon today. Now Aidan Flint, who uh, was formerly with Alfred, who's been a regular in the heart of their defence, big, tall, giant of a man, really. So Jack Lester, still wearing that arm brace on his left arm that he broke back in September against Leighton Orient. Swindon doing the huddle and uh, really it's all about who's got the right frame of mind who's got the boldness who's got the uh, the bottle really for this johnston's paint trophy final 2012 who's going to be the 21st winner of this tournament well, to take through the uh, match steve york thanks phil uh, just about to kick off now it was a foggy foggy morning uh, this morning in chesterfield the supporters left uh, Chesterfield to head down to, to North London to Wembley Stadium but as you can see now it's a bright sunny afternoon and let's hope the bright and sunny mood of the supporters at the moment is still bright and sunny at the end of the game this afternoon I think there's going to be a few suntans got during the, uh, the course of the afternoon referee Tony Bates from Stoke-on-Trent then they're about to get the team started in this 2012 Johnson Paints Trophy final Chesterfield versus Swindon Town Chesterfield Kicking off, and away we go at the start of the first half. And straight away, the ball played out wide onto that far side of the field and uh, launched into the crowd there. And, uh, the Swindon throwing, I think it's going to be on that far side of the field. But, uh, plenty of Swindon fans there, of course, an easy trip in from them down the M4. And a great season they're having, very much reminiscent of the Spinelight season. Uh, last year, as McEvely, the debut maker. What about making a debut at Wembley? Yeah, you're swinging debut at Wembley. It's not bad. He's an ex-Derby County player as well, isn't he, Jamie McEvely? So uh, he's in the starting lineup, as we can see. And it's Chesterfield in possession now as Frank Musa plays that ball forward, looking for Jordan Bowery there. But uh, Swindon repel that particular danger at the moment. Alec getting involved in the midfield. Mendy as well in there. And the ball played out wide onto that far touch line to Drew Talbot. Uh, James Hurst playing that one through the middle and uh, again cleared at the back by the screen in defence. Played wide there on the ferry and uh, again McKellar in the left back to McCormack wearing the screen in captain's armband this afternoon. Devera, right back from the Barnet player, Joe Devera. And the header on there for the uh, number nine Paul Benson from the Dagenham Rugby's man. And back into the safety of Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, Benson and Connell, two decent uh, footballers, two decent attackers, both got a goal in them, but, but neither really rattling the scoring charts this season. 
No, and you think they would be. Swindon in the top of the League 2 at the moment, and, and obviously playing well and playing with a lot of confidence. They're getting the right results, and uh, you'd think uh, the two forwards like that would be really going for it. As the ball's played in there, it's curled just wide there by that uh, number 22, Lee Holmes, and the uh, playing on the left-hand side for Swindon Town. Dom Shalab, of course, uh, played for Derby County and uh, just down the road at South Normanton. Frederick Gent's school pupil who was in his day. And uh, you know, while a lot of attention has been on Richie down the right hand side, he uh, might just create a few problems down the left. Recently joined Swindon on loan for, you know, I think, the third time, I think, from Southampton. Yeah, he is on loan for the third time. He's actually Mansfield born as well, I believe. Not that we want to mention that. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think that might be just the record, but I think we're just this side of the, of the border he was, but he might have gone to Kingsville Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Chesterfield then playing the ball forward once more as uh, Hurst plays that one in towards the edge of the penalty area, but again, Swindon get it away. And this time the referee has given Swindon the decision they'll have a free kick just outside the centre circle. It was a scrappy opening, really. Uh, nobody yet managed to, to get their foot onto the ball, just that ball in from, from Holmes. Will trouble any of the defence so far, but it is a tense occasion, so no real surprises. Yeah, three minutes played at the moment, and uh, the goal, neither goalkeeper yet had anything really to do, but uh, I'm sure that will change as the game goes on. But Drew Talbot there blocking that ball and uh, swinging on the back foot slightly as McCormack plays it back to his goalkeeper, West Fodringham, and straight away there. Well, we're able to make a challenge on the goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. What a turnaround he's had in his season, Jordan Bauer. Um, uh, you know, an automatic pick now, one of the first names on the team sheet. A, a, a great second half of the season for him. Yes, he has. He's done really well this season. And he's got the goals as well, which, uh, which I'm sure he's pleased about. But he's, he's gone from being a, a debatable start to, a, like you say, for a guaranteed start, really. So, Chesterfield on the attack again now. The ball laid back there to Talbot, who crosses in first time. And the header goes in there from Leicester. So Leicester, who's uh, had a lot of the season injured. And he's in there, the swinging keeper. The ball coming in there from Drew Talbot. Leicester gets in front of the defender and at the near post, following and makes the save. Well, a great cross in from Drew on the right hand side. Perfect positioning from Leicester as well. And the ease that he got past McCormack was uh, interesting. Yeah, and encouraging for Chesterfield supporters. Let's hope he can do some more of that as the game goes on. It's Swindon at the moment, though, in possession. And uh, the ball played back there by De Vera to the number eight, Simon Ferry. And across the midfield now, to that far side, Holmes, taking on Hurst, and Hurst getting the better of that. And a long ball from uh, James Hurst is all the way back to the swimming keeper. Yeah, not a great ball from Hurst, but a great tackle to uh, dismiss uh, Holmes from his possession. It's Risa now, plays it wide onto this near side, De Vera, inside to uh, Ferry, who turns it back to the captain. And McCormack, and again across the back four to Swindon. Swindon playing with a bit of patience at the moment, and uh, the, suddenly the long ball is struck through the middle there, but again too long for the forwards and uh, easily collected by Tommy Lee. But it's a warm day, neither none of the 22 players will be wanting to expend too much energy in these opening uh, minutes. There's a long, long way to go, you know, 90 minutes, maybe even longer than that. These uh, two Swindon players go for the same ball there, Rissa and uh, De Vera. Back there by Smith and played forward a high ball and uh, Chesterfield to deal with and uh, Thompson dealing with it for the time being at least. The ball played forward once more now by the Spyrites and we'll turn back and look heavily to his goalkeeper. He's following him, the 21 year old, started his career at Fulham, so he's been at Crystal Palace without actually playing for either in the first team. Drew Talbot for Chesterfield, keeps the ball in play on the right-hand side, short ball into Musa, and lifts the ball downfield, Bowery makes the run, but, uh, and Keverley is there first, and they're able to turn. Small ball across the field, De Vera plays it back, and now up to Matt Ritchie on this near side of the field. Ritchie making a good run, using the space available to him, a little ball inside there, a good little ball inside, Connell now, oh and it was well wide there from Alan Connell, he'll be disappointed with that, Chesterfield's of course, will be delighted with it of course, but there was a man on the far side of the penalty area there, you can see this now as the ball is played in there, the little knockback there to Connell, and a the guy there on the far side of the penalty area in tons of space, and 
he obviously didn't see him. Yeah, poor cross. Uh, a little bit worrying how much space Swindon found in midfield there, and a little one to put uh, Connell behind Nathan Smith, but a dreadful cross from the former Bournemouth and Grimsby. Again, it's the red of Swindon in possession at the moment as the ball goes out to Joe McEvely on the far side, as we said earlier, making his debut for Swindon Town this afternoon at Wembley. And now Holmes knocks that one through the middle. Chased by Ritchie, but uh, four getting in there. Head on by Musa. Now Leicester chases after this one. Jordan Bowery now. He's in on goal here, Bowery. The defender coming across to cover him and Bowery slips over the ball, really. What happened there, Phil? That was a great opportunity. It was a good opening for Chesterfield there. Nice uh, ball forward. Jordan took it under control, made 30 yards worth of uh, ground there, clearly onside, but just got it onto his left foot and just mishit it there. Oh, it looks as though he almost air, air shot that one. This angle will probably show a little bit better. Yeah, but hit his ankle, didn't he? Completely shanked that one. Yeah, the bad connection there. Good the corner, the anyway. After we'd seen, been singing his praises only a few moments ago. Corner for Chesterfield then, and Frank Musa did put the delivery in this time. And we're at the back of the six-yard box where Simon Ford and waiting but Swin and get it clear. Lifted back in again by Hurst into the danger area and a chance oh, here for Chesterfield. Just and the flag up on the far side and it's not going to count. Jack Lester the flag went up there. Dug didn't. the ball into the net but it's not going to count. Not sure uh, about where the offside was but it was a very early flag there from the uh, linesman on that far side. I think he was just saying offside, wasn't he? As a matter, here, here comes the ball. Oh no, it isn't. Look, the uh, the front of the right hand side playing everybody on there. That was not as, offside. Yeah, it looks as though Devera was there's certainly nothing with it wrong with it after that because there's people on the line there, so it can't be the secondary part of the move. But for the first part, the flag did go up, like you say. But Devera seemed to play everybody else on, so uh, a bad decision there from the officials as far as Chesterfield are concerned. It was little argument from Chesterfield uh, at that point in time. It was very very marginal, but. As you know, with the benefit of slow mo that we've got there, we could clearly see that when the ball was lifted forward, there was nobody offside. An argument for technology raises its head again, doesn't it? As uh, Swindon try and uh, get forward with an interception there by uh, Musa, and now Mendy dispossessed though, likes Mendy. And it's all going to be about whether that gives Chesterfield confidence that they breach the Swindon rear guard or whether they. Uh, Put the shoulders down, the heads down, because of the uh, the fact that what looks a good goal was chalked off, but not massive argument from the Chesterfield players. So uh, I think they've probably accepted that it may well have been uh, offside, uh, even though as, as we can see, we've the benefit of technology, but it wasn't. Yeah, the confidence thing as well. Whoever scores the first goal, I mean, if Swindon had scored the first goal, having this, had the season they've had, they, they, you would expect they could well go on and win this game. But so if Chesterfield were to, to, by the same token, if Chesterfield were to concede having had the season they've had, uh, you know, heads could fall down really, so uh, it will depend of course when the first goal is scored and uh, also of course what's set at half time as uh, Chesterfield have possession again now and the high ball there from Hurst, and we know we're in particular other than to the number nine, and it's near side Paul Benson, and he uh, puts the ball well over the chest Well it's two openings they've had from the right hand side, as the linesman there from the uh, Contemplating what he did. Here we go again. That's uh, the, the ball just flicked up there. You can see De Vera at the right hand side. Well, you know, on this near side, Musa may have been a little, but certainly not interfering with play. Uh, for, there goes the flag. You can see just as Ford made contact with it, probably should have got it in the back of the net, but there was no question that uh, Leicester was onside when that ball came yeah, forward. You so, can see when the flag was up, when the flag went up, that Leicester was actually standing in an offside position, but the ball had already played, been played before that. So when the ball is played, he's onside for So, yeah, it's a, it's a bad decision. Well, you can see the temperature there. Tim Sheridan taking his, uh, his jacket off. And, uh, well, no doubt uh, somebody's passed the message down if uh, there's some spotters. Oh, oh, well, there's uh, somebody that's not taking his jacket yeah, off yeah, uh, and his scarf. It's obviously hot, <laughs> must be used to it being hot in Lazio. I even never know what's in Rome, no one. And Fodderingham there having to come and scramble that one away and Swindon do their job and get it clear, at least as far as uh, the edge of the penalty area. Sam Ferry on the ball now. And Ferry leaves it across to McEvely on the left hand side of the Swindon defence. Big flat from Fodderingham there, wasn't it, really? So. Uh, Interesting if we get a chance to see that uh, again. Well, maybe maybe the goal that wasn't has uh, rumbled a few feathers in the Swindon defence. We'll have to see what happens as time goes on. Please. Should have done because it wasn't very good defending, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Header forward then, this time by uh, Hurst. And then McCormack. Smith. McCormack again. 
And the format looking for options further forward and finding none. Instead, he played it wide to De Vera. Now to Ritchie on this uh, near side of the field. Smith there getting in between Matt Ritchie and the ball. Talbot. High ball looking towards the head of Jordan Bowery. Mendy following up. Alex Mendy now trying to cut inside. He goes into the challenge there and the, the free kick is given. Is it? No, the play on says the referee. Nathan Smith wins the throw off the uh, shins of Matt Ritchie. Looks like he's got a little bit of blood going down his uh, side of his head there, Ritchie. Stepping into the area and then uh, getting tackled as uh, Swindon try and get away with it once more. The ball out of play for the throw. I don't know what's happened there. You're right, Phil. There is some blood on Richie's head. I don't see what happened there. But, uh, uh, yeah, we saw Mendy uh, uh, win a tackle a bit, a bit early in there. Absolute cool as a cucumber, that character. I don't think anything can ruffle him. And of course, he is a cup final winner. He scored a penalty in the uh, Czech League Cup final uh, um, a couple of seasons ago to win it for them. And of course, Scored the uh, penalty that put Chesterfield through in the shootout at Preston in one of the earlier rounds, having uh, previously beaten uh, Tranmere and uh, Notts County ahead of the Oldham game. Well, I did know a little bit of that, but my knowledge of Czech football is not that great. Swindon do have a corner, of our, it seems, on this uh, far side of the field. And mm -hmm. bright sunshine, and number 22, Lee Holmes, there. Is he going to take it? De Vera coming up from the back. Well, yes. They've not got the Giants without Flint, have they? Not really, no, not everybody's a, a midget compared to many people on the side of Flynn, but uh, McCormack and uh, the Susan defenders McCormack and Risa, and you would expect to go up for corners. So uh, with people like Mendy and Bowery at the back of Chesterfield, if they if they're back on defensive duty as well as, the, as our own centre defenders, then obviously it's going to make it tough if it high balls into the box. Here's the corner once more from Holmes. And the header was from Joe Rivera, in fact, and just wide of Tommy Lee's goal. It worried Tommy enough to make a stretch for it, but it's a wide and chest goal. It was almost in slow motion, that, wasn't it? The uh, header very looping, and you always felt that Tommy had got that covered, but he was covering every angle, literally. Uh, Joe Rivera, whose side, ex side, was beaten in the Southern final by Swindon uh, Barnett. Yeah, that's was, right, 177 appearances for Barnett, and there quite a few of those against Chesterfield. Yeah, yeah well, he seems to. We seem to have bumped into Barnett quite a lot over the years. Uh, it could have, could have well have happened again this afternoon if uh, Barnett had got the better of Swindon, but it wasn't to be as Tommy Lee makes the clearance again for Chesterfield and the referee signalling a Swindon ball. You see the two managers there on the touchline, John Sherry in his shirt sleeves, Paolo Di Canio in cold scarf. <laughs> something, something, surely the temperature differential in one box to another can't be that great. Uh, Swindon waste the ball, they're both magical midfielders in the day. Of course, and Chesterfield fans may well remember the day that Paolo Di Canio scored at uh, at Saltergate in a penalty shootout 0-2, I think, in Dave Rushbury's uh, um, season as manager. Chesterfield against West Ham in the um, League Cup, and uh, yeah, it was uh, a very, very close encounter. And Di Canio was the first person I ever saw to take one of those chipped penalties. He just went mm -hmm. to him and flicked it. Yeah. And he was the first player I ever saw do that. Like that. Chesterfield again looking to try and get forward. But the header is out of play. Chesterfield. Oh, his woolly hat there, look. The just in case, just in case it gets chilly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only 23 degrees out yeah, there, or he's, whatever. He's, took his hat he's got his beach hat. balls as well. <laughs> 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 woolly hat and the beach balls. Throw to the spy rights then on that far side of the field. Hurst on the line. Uh, Swindon looking to get this one away. It's Smith on the ball, Jonathan Smith. Stopped by Allett. Musa up to Hurst again. Talbot stays wide on the right. Short ball into Musa. Going battling there as well, but Swindon get the better of it this time and start to drive forward once more. Looking for Holmes on that far side. Both intercepted there by uh, Hurst. It was a poor ball though. We're going to say from the midfield, and that was too long and out of play for the goal. Well, what we are sort of 17, 18 minutes into the game so far, and uh, nothing to choose from from the teams. Which is not surprising in a way, because there's only one league place between them, isn't there? I mean, just swinging in the top of League Two, and Chesterfield at the bottom of the League One, so there's theoretically there's only one league place between the two teams. And in, in this competition, although Swindon beat Exeter in the uh, the first round, uh, um, that was at a time when perhaps people aren't selecting their strongest eleven. Since then, they've only played other League Two teams, Wimbledon beat on penalties, Southend, and we've mentioned 
Barnet. So uh, you know, they've not come across teams from a, from a higher level in this competition uh, right from the, the word go. Well, they've been winning all the way against League Two teams. Let's see how they do this afternoon against League One. There's uh, Matt Ritchie again on the ball for swing. Good challenge there from Nathan Smith. Putting the ball out straight away. He'll be pleased to be in the starting 11 at Wembley. The, at the expense of course of Liam Rideouts, but uh, good news for Nathan Smith being able to start at this fantastic new stadium. And the season that he made his uh, international debut for Jamaica as well. Oh, that was an awful throw in that. That was uh, not the sort of throw in of a team that's won 13 out of the last 15 no, games. Not at all. No, one of those give it back to the goalkeeper when somebody's been injured really, wasn't it? But, uh, Tommy Lee will uh, take the goal kick. And, uh, Tommy Lee, you can see his view there of the stadium. Other than the players, of course, there's a masses and masses of swing in town supporters, and that's what Tommy can see. He can see himself on the big screen as well, that must be yeah. uh, somewhat disconcerting when you're down there. <laughs> yeah. every, every little error that you might make magnified to, uh, to all the supporters up there in the glorious technical Absolutely. Nathan Smith to take the throw for Chesterfield as they press into the swing at half once more. Mendy trying to make himself available. It's Mendy that gets the ball. And that was out of play, and it's going to be a Chesterfield ball again. And Matt Ritchie lost the ball. Smith with the throw. And Jack Lester now was a little shove there. I think there was a little shove in the back there on the defender. And Jack then uh, protests his innocence as usual, but of course, we also won. The Wembley winner as well, Jack, of course, played for Grimsby in uh, a playoff victory. Missed the equivalent of this uh, tournament through suspension in the same season, and the only other Chesterfield player with one day experience right at the opposite end of the pitch. Tommy Lee, who was on the losing side for Rochdale and the first time in the Swindon now trying to press forward again once more here. This is Holmes. Holmes with the shots. And Lee Holmes there. Coming very, very close indeed for Swindon Town. That's probably, as, other than the, the goal that was disallowed for Chesterfield, that's probably as close as either side had come to. Yes, it was uh, a nice shot. He brought it in, inside onto his right foot but uh, over hit that didn't he, as soon as it left his boot you could see he'd skied it a little bit but good position and he got himself into a good position and then he'll be very disappointed with the quality of his final delivery Yeah, the final finish, the right there but it's also I think Chesterfield will be looking at the fact that he was able to put inside and create the space to shoot in the first place Spyrites have the throw, it's Drew Talbot to Hurst midway side the swing and half, the ball played in but cleared at the back there by McCormack Chesterfield back pedalling now as uh, Josh Thompson. Uh, Tommy Lee right out there on the touch line. That's not his penalty area. Uh, Thompson, another one not uh, a stranger to playing in front of big crowds. Played in an old firm derby for Celtic. Uh, one of the reduced ten men fairly early on. Rangers got the uh, decisive victory that day. But I can't think of too many more uh, white hot atmospheres than an old firm derby to have played in. I suppose if you can survive that, you can survive this one. Uh, the ball out of play once more on that far side. Lee Holmes claiming the ball for Swindon. Uh, it's uh, going to leave it for... Uh, see, so Swindon had the throw on the far side. McEverley could take it. It's Hobbit. Out of play. And then uh, again, it'll be Jay McEverley. And uh, then it's done for his career at Brighton Rovers. And uh, well, it's actually Liverpool ball. So I think it's Brighton Burn. They almost made a hundred appearances for Derby County. It was McKelvey on the ball again now as he tries to get the better of that chest of the defence. Drew Talbot back there gets the ball away, gets a lot of work in the game already. Drew Talbot and uh, Swindon uh, have to backtrack this time. It's a uh, free kick and uh, clearance from the uh, yeah, furthest man back there, Drew Talbot. Always get 100% uh, from, from Drew. Had a terrific time at Chesterville. Get up, says uh, John Sheridan. The, Chesterfield manager from his place in the uh, bright sunshine in the technical area. And Swindon head clear once more as Chesterfield play that long ball in. But, uh, again a chance now for Mendy. Alex Mendy, a little flick through there. Bowery unable to keep possession. Chesterfield keep possession with Nathan Smith now. Smith trying to go to the byline, gets the cross in. Well before the byline and fluttering and stretching there, but his height rescued him there, fluttering and making the save. And a quick throw out there onto that far side as uh, Holmes tries to play the ball forward and swing and try and break quickly. Holmes again on the ball, looking to play the cross in towards the penalty area. It's in there towards Connell and the header away at the back. 
Back to Nathan Smith on this near side. Nathan Smith, one of two Smiths on the field in tonight. Nathan Smith at Chesterfield, number 28. And Jonathan Smith, the number 24 for Swindon, who's playing in the midfield. He was their 100% uh, really Jonathan Smith, he couldn't have drew Talbot really. Holmes again, attacking Hurst. Lays it off this time. McEverly. Holmes goes wide once more. Again to attack uh, James Hurst, and Hurst gets the better of him that time. Well done, James Hurst, and a good ball forward for Leicester to chase. And now Bowery chases as well, but just a little bit too much pace on the pass from Leicester. And set uh, Jordan Bowery up there. That was good fullback play from uh, James Hurst, who, you know, even this early in his career, I think in his uh, 16th match, made it to be played in every English competition Premier League. League, the Championship, League One, League Two, FA Cup, League Cup, and Johnston's Paints Trophy. In all seven competitions of England in just his 16th match when he uh, played for Chesterfield against Oldham in the Northern Final. He's a similarly young lad for as well. He's quite an impressive record, that isn't it? As, uh, Tommy Lee prepares to take the goal kick as far as. I'm trying to get it validated by the uh, Association of Football Statisticians if it's the quickest ever for anybody to play in all the English competitions. Well, I don't know if he's going to break and take that scarf off. Or if it's just one of those uh, look things, I suspect it's a, a, a hoodoo thing for him. Well, I don't know. He uh, seems to be showing signs of frustration at the moment. He can't even rush from the bench. He's not a bit, he's getting a bit too hot. He probably is getting a bit hot under the collar. With some of this, well, he literally is. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Perhaps they're not doing what he's told them to do. But, uh, anyway, Tommy Lee with the ball downfield once more. And uh, header away there towards the centre circle. Swindon looking to get forward again. But uh, Thompson's header. Then I was... And now Simon Ferry for Swindon. And Chesterfield seem to be keeping the shape a, a lot better than Swindon. There seems, seems to be a lot of uh, Swindon players sort of crisscrossing and not really knowing where they want to be, whereas Chesterfield keeping that 4 4 2 very much to the fore. I think they need to do that as uh, the second half will wear on as well because, as I said earlier, in the heat, you need to be making the ball do the work. If you're chasing the ball all the time, you're going to be worn out midway through the second half, and that could be a telling factor in this game. Although a lot of the pitch is in shade, a lot of it is also in sunshine, and Chesterfield now have that flow on the far side of the field. Well, there doesn't seem to be any cutting up of the pitch, there's all been loads of criticism since the redeveloped Wembley Open, but it seems perfect today. Yes, and it's only March as well, isn't it? You know, it's uh, he's, he's still just coming out of the winter, really, and, uh, and although you wouldn't know it, you'd think it was probably the middle of June looking at the sunshine out there, but uh, it's only the end of March, so uh, yeah, the pitch is in pretty good nick. For West Fotheringham now, with the Chesterfield fans bouncing in the dirt, in the uh, far far side of the uh, pitch, with a great sound sight that is. Thompson with the clearance, it's not gone far enough yet though, Moose are trying to help out there. And then Allett gets it forward to Jack Lester, who goes down with the challenge of Simon Ferry, who wins the free kick. Simon Ferry making sure he's not able to take a quick free kick. And tell me right, the Chesterfield assistant manager knows Celtic fellow knows quite a bit about uh, Simon Ferry, at Celt. And Bowery and then away at the back again, once more on that swinging defence. Richie under pressure from Mendy, Alex Mendy now cutting inside, Mendy looking to shoot, and it's a good effort too from Alex Mendy, it was always rising as it left his boot, but he did well there, he pressurised Matt Ritchie, he got the possession first of all, and then when he got the opportunity to shoot, he did so, unfortunately, just over West Fotheringham's crossbar. You can't do any better than that, win the ball yourself, take it into a shooting position and uh, let one fly, and uh, oh, it looks so, uh, uh, John Barry just clipped inadvertently the legs of Richie, but that wasn't far away from the Frenchman. A good effort then from Mendy. He's, uh, really had his scoring boots on this season. He only scored twice for Chesterfield this season, as Nathan Smith puts that one out of play for a swinging throw down near the corner flag. Another opportunity for Swindon to create some pressure here. Joe Rivera with the throw in. And with another challenge in there, he's uh, put, probably put more tackles in the, in the, the opening part of this match than, uh, than for much of the season put together. He's probably making the most of it by cleaning the shade for because he'll be in the sunshine <laughs> in the second half. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Swindon pressing forward again, the ball wide to Holmes on that far side of the field, taking on Hurst. James Hurst, well he did well again there Hurst, he got his foot on it and it was enough to deflect it onto the roof of the Chesterfield goal, it'll be a swinging corner but Hurst, is, is, Lee Holmes is causing some problems on that on that uh, left hand side for Chesterfield and uh, James Hurst is the uh, first line of defence for that. And despite the fact that Hurst is doing well against him, he is causing uh, some problems, whereas Richie on the right hand side hardly been in the game so far, credit to Nathan Smith. 
Rangers. So a few Swindon Town fans there as well, anxiously watching their side as they have this uh, opportunity again on the Chesterfield goal. The ball in on that far side, headed clear out to Alice. And it's just outside the penalty area. The ball played forward now, and uh, I think I think he was on his own up front there, wasn't he? Uh, Musa and, uh, yeah, Musa, the man that they tend to leave up at uh, corners these days. Uh, quite nippy, quite quick when he breaks away. Um, but I'm surprised it's not Barry, really. I would have thought he'd have been the one, although, of course, he is a, a good header of the ball to have yeah, that. I think that's why he's back there, isn't it? Yeah, he's, he's back on defensive duty for the area threat, of course. But uh, Musa on loan from Leicester City, who's uh, been fairly impressive so far mm. since he joined. The ball played again out wide onto that far side to Holmes. Again, Hurst has to go across and try and stop him from getting any further. The ball played in this time towards the back of the penalty area, towards the end of the six-yard box. When there a challenge from Nathan Smith there denies Alan Connell getting any further. Well, it's uh, still pretty even again. Uh, both teams had shots. We saw uh, an effort just over from De Vera, a header, and a shot from Alex Mendy that didn't miss the target by, by very much, of course. Jack Lester had the ball in the net, but was uh, ruled out for offside that subsequently was proved not to have been offside. But uh, that moment apart, very little to choose between the teams. Yeah, I think Swindon are just starting to, to perhaps look a slightly the stronger side. Chesterfield haven't really had much of an attack in the last few minutes. Swindon seems to be pressing more. They've had, as we've said just now, uh, Holmes is causing some problems down that left-hand side and Swindon seeming to be growing in strength due to that. They have that corner and that one uh, that was lifted onto the, onto the roof of the net as well. So Swindon looking slightly stronger at the moment, I think, as the first half comes into its last, well, we're into the last 10 minutes of it almost. It's probably the last 15, certainly. But Alec plays the ball forward. And again, McCormack and uh, well, Fotheringham there. And McCormack had to sort it out quickly. There was pressure coming from the Chesterfield forwards. Visions of Oldham there. No, indeed, and, uh, Josh Thompson this time to put in, and still Swindon on the attack here, showing their strength here, and again the shot comes in there, and Tommy Lee made the save, did that come off Thompson first? I think that was a deflection of his own uh, of his own play, that, yeah. If that was the case, that was a superb reaction from the Chesterfield goalkeeper, let's have a look at this now, the ball played wide there, the shot coming in, I think it's Holmes once again that plays the ball in, and it, I think it does, it hits yep. Thompson. Josh Thompson, so a reaction save from Tommy Lee there, had to change his direction pretty quick. And now Swindon again, this is Ferry with a chance, and shot smuggled at source there. So Swindon retain possession, it's Holmes again, lifts that ball into the edge of the six-yard box. I think it was Thompson's header that got it away. Drew Talbot comes to follow up there and try and put the pressure on Swindon, forcing them to backtrack. But Swindon retain possession, the ball comes across to this near side now. And it's uh, McEvely, the number two, incidentally, that's a uh, nice little ball to Holmes. The two have switched sides there, McEvely, and as the ball goes out of the corner, McEvely and Holmes have been playing down the Swindon left, but they both popped up there on the Swindon right, didn't they? Well, that's from uh, the corner formation. Things go a little bit uh, uh, different at the corners, but for the first time, there's been a couple of minutes pressure from a single side. Swindon camped in the Chesterfield final third for the last uh, few minutes. The first real pressure of the game from either side from a consistent, sustained uh, point of view. And Swindon then with this corner, Holmes again on the far side, lifts the ball in, an outswinging ball, he didn't make past the first man though, it was headed away, I think it was Jack Lester back there on defensive duty, he's actually got the ball out of the penalty area, but Swindon keep the pressure on, they keep the possession, and again it's that man Holmes taking on the Chesterfield defenders, and the ball in this time, it's headed out and by Nathan Smith, and once more, a Swindon corner, as you say Phil, the Swindon, Keeping the pressure on more and more now as we approach half time. Do you think John Sheridan will be happy to take 0 0 at half time? I, I would think that uh, um, he, he will, would be happy. And I don't think Nick Dickenny will be too disappointed with the 0 0 either. Oh, and again by Swindon Town. Tommy Lee forced. Oh, good save. Tommy Lee there and amongst a cluster of players. And uh, there's always a bit of argy bargy when, when situations arise like that. But Tommy Lee stays strong and got his arms up there and got the ball nice and cleanly. Absolutely. A hero of the Chesterfield supporters, player of the year for the last two seasons and must be uh, up there with a shout despite missing a chunk of the autumn with that groin injury picked up in the game against Berry. Connell plays it wide onto that far side and the ball played in first time. It's uh, Ferry trying to lift it on again to Connell. And the ball trickles out of play this time for the goal kick. Josh Thompson there. And then from Celtic doing his defending. Uh, here's the opportunity uh, 
see again that uh, well ricochet off Thompson and a terrific save from Lee. That's I think the first save he's had to make. It's from his own player. So uh, you're just Thompson just keeping him yeah, you can uh, sharp. You can see it there <laughs> certainly that angle behind the goal. You can see straight away there that uh, fantastic reflex, reflex save there from Tommy Lee. Yeah, and Kenny, uh, knew that was a chance. I, I, I can't quite make my mind up whether Holmes was trying for a shot or, a, or whether that was a cross. If it was a shot, it was one that he was placing to try and curl in the far corner. He didn't have the power on it that you thought it may have been. And of mm. course, if it had the power, had the power on it, it, oh, Jack Lester down there, no, Jamie Hewitt on here. him. Uh, Jamie Hewitt on the field and Jack Lester down for a leg injury. Is it a groin or a hamstring or something? I'm not sure yet. But uh, it's not good news for Chesterfield if Jack Lester's down on the floor with 35 minutes played. Paolo Di Canio, meanwhile, and his captain, Alan McCormack. I don't know if they're discussing tactics or arguing tactics, but either way, uh, Di Canio passing the message on to the players on the field. And I'm sure in the heat as well, Phil, the players will be taking this opportunity to have a quick drink at the substitutes bench at the same time. Yes, you've got to take in uh, water or sort of liquid on a, on a day like this, 20 odd degrees here in uh, North London. The uh, Swindon bench now looking on. And that's the uh, kit man and the tea boy, I think, from uh, <laughs> from Swindon. Mr. Canio still in his coat. He, m he must have been wearing that at some stage in the uh, earlier rounds. So anyway, Jack Lester's up and continuing on after being treated by another Wembley winner, Jamie Hewitt. Uh, yes, he winner in '95, and he also played in '90 uh, as well, along with uh, Lee Rogers played in both of them as well. In the Swindon in the middle of the park now, and Simon Ferry. Wants to turn the ball back there. And, uh, and Robbins looks to try and get forward again as uh, half, this first half gradually starts to draw to a close and the of play. Holmes not been able to keep that one in. So Chesterfield throw this time. Well, Lester seems to be moving okay there, doesn't he? So uh, 36 years of age now, Jack. And we're hoping to, to run that off, although he is looking like he's trying to shout something over to John Sheridan, I think. Now. Certainly looking over towards his manager. Would do well to play the 90 minutes in the, in the heat of the afternoon this afternoon, wouldn't he? Really, but uh, we'll have to see. 36 years old in 90 minutes, and that's where the heat's going to certainly take us to. So Chesterfield trying to play the ball forward once more, and uh, come back there. Oh, and Leicester's gone down. Jack Leicester down again as uh, Swinning get through here. Alan McCormack, the captain, he's made a good run from the centre of the defence. Still McCormack on the ball now. He's uh, had to turn it back, and the ball crossed in. Deep into the penalty, Tommy Lee stretching and claiming that one despite the fact that he had to let it go down onto the pitch before he could claim it cleanly. He did so before a swing and boot could get on the end of it. Well, Jack's still down there, he's shaking his head a little bit there. There's obviously something uh, distressing the uh, Chesterfield number 14, the hero of the front line, being watched on by the swing and supporters there. Jamie Lee, uh, Jamie, uh, Lapp, <laughs> Jamie Hewitt comes on to. Uh, well, he's going to admit to some treatment. Is he taking? He oh, oh no, it's the armband. The armband's going. I was going to say his expression on his face. He doesn't look happy at all. And yes, indeed, the captain's armband is discarded by Jack Lester. He started the match wearing the captain's armband for Chesterfield and would lift the trophy at the end if Chesterfield were to win, of course. Or was a bonus fifty of the captain of the side. Mm. But uh, he's, he's discarded that onto the pitch now, and it looks like Jack Lester has played his last part in this Johnson Paints Trophy final. And, uh, well, that's Craig Westcar warming up, uh, uh, the natural replacement, but what a shame. You see Derek uh, Niven there sitting at the, uh, at the back of the Chesterfield dugout as well. Paolo Di Canio and uh, McCormack have chat, a chat again. He's got Bowden there consoling Jack Lester. Well, you've got to feel disappointed with Jack Lester. He's not going to get many more Wembley appearances now at his age, is he? And, uh, it's a real shame that he's had to. He's, he's played 35 minutes, but he's, uh, you know, really that's been it. He's had to go off, and uh, I'm sure m nearly all the Chesterfield supporters will feel exactly the same. So disappointed with the uh, Chesterfield number 14. Craig Westcott on in his place then, number nine. Craig Westcott. He's not come on yet. They've, uh, they've still got to uh, bring him on. Wait for a. Oh, he's a swing him on swing. the far side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, uh, so Chesterfield down to 10 men temporarily then. There's uh, swing and try and get the ball forward again. Out of play. The goal kick, maybe now Westcar can come on. Uh, John Sherry in there, uh, Crossley. <laughs> that pictures he's showing him. <laughs> Bit of a joker in the dressing room is uh, Craig Westcar. And I've seen the match programme today that uh, Mark Crossley says he calls him Eddie Murphy. <laughs> right. 
So, uh, pat on the back with you and Barry there. So, they're the, that's the striking partnership now, then, with Jack Lester off the field, with Craig Westcar in, in the harness with uh, Jordan Bowery up front for the Spyrax. Now, as Tommy Lee takes the goal kick downfield, and Tom is stretching for it there to try and make the header on the pass. Well, side. that says it all. The picture Absolutely. makes a thousand words, Absolutely. doesn't it? Absolutely. No words are necessary. Chesterfield throw on the far side then, and the ball turned back there to Hurst, who crosses it into the penalty area once more, and it was an important header there, and the uh, Risser that got the ball clear. Well, the hustle and bustle of West Garner will give uh, the Swindon defence a different sort of problem to that that uh, Jack posed. Yes, absolutely, something else for the Swindon defence to think about, and also hope it'll pay off as Jordan Bowery again tries to get through there, and uh, Swindon get it clear before Bowery can get his foot on the ball. And Kevily's header. On by Ferry, high ball, which uh, Benson couldn't make. And the ball came wide, which was the far side once more. Still Swindon retaining the possession, and on this warm afternoon. Target there, pressing once again. Swindon keep the ball as they play square across the midfield. Ferry on the ball. Now Richie has cut his side. Richie drifting across the other side of the field at the moment as uh, Jonathan Smith now plays it across to Guevara. I'm sure I'm getting nowhere. Now they're moving the ball around, but as you say, they're not. Uh, there's no penetration there at the moment. Is there? Is, uh, come to the closing moments of the first half. And Cormac moves the ball across to this near side of the field. Mendy makes the challenge there, but Swindon again retain the possession. Ball played through into the middle of the park there, and again it's Simon Ferry out wide to Holmes on that far side of the field, taking on Hurst once more. Holmes again, good foot in there by uh, James Hurst. Puts the ball out, I think it's in the expense of a corner once more, but he's having a good match, James Hurst, against uh, Lee Holmes. Well, they've racked up the corners, but to be honest, not looked really dangerous from the Devera, had that uh, looping header that didn't go too far over. But uh, that apart, Tommy Lee's done pretty well. And let's see what happens here then. The ball is played short this time. It's played back again to Holmes. Now he'll put the cross in towards the back of the six yard box. And Jordan Bowery there with time to turn and clear. Much to his relief. West Car. Field there couldn't stretch to make the header. And again, Swindon launch it back up to that far side of the field. The Swindon left. The ball comes in once more from Holmes. The header there from Benson. And then Connell. <laughs> and Connell is well wide of Tommy Lee's goal and he's got to be disappointed with that he had one earlier on in the half Phil and he's had another one there where his connection got totally wrong much to the relief of Chesterton fans well perfect nod down from Paul Benson we know what he's all about in his Dagenham days but uh, Connell got well I think he got time I think he could have brought that down and uh, played something a little bit more conventional I'm delighted the way that he's uh, played it going for the spectacular going for the photograph goal but uh, well you can see what Paolo Di Canio thought of that <laughs> I think I think if he'd have been on the end of it, he'd have probably done a better job than that. Oh, maybe that coach's not as lucky as he thinks it is. <laughs> Head forward again as uh, Swindon try and build another attack. They've certainly had the the best of the of the last sort of ten or fifteen minutes, I think, as, as these corners have been flooded in. But having said that, Chesterfield defence have held firm as well, haven't they? Well, that's right. The only save uh, Tommy's had to make from off his own. <laughs> A ricochet off his own man. Yeah, absolutely. Off Josh Thompson. Yeah. But Smith. credit to the two fullbacks of Chesterfield who uh, are, are you know, reducing the, uh, the number of bullets coming in. Yeah, the threat of the wing, and that's right. And it's Bowery trying to get through that West Car as well. But an important challenge there from Oliver Rissa to uh, keep Swindon on course in possession. And the ball played out to this near side of the field again, out of play. Did it come off Nathan Smith? It must have done because the linesman has signalled the, the Swindon throw. Yeah, I think it was a good intercept from uh, Smith there. Just took the chance of Richie having quite a bit of space to run into. He needed to make the header, and he did. Nice on the ball now. So now Ferry. And now McCormack, the captain. Well, as the half ticks down towards its uh, end, what do you think John Sherry and, and for that matter, Pat on the canyon might be saying at half time to, his, to their players? Well, I think uh, uh, John Sheridan will be, will be saying that you know, his team's defended very, very well. They've got in there, they've cut off the ammunition for the, uh, the front men. Perhaps they just need to uh, uh, get down the flanks a little bit more from an uh, offensive point of view than they have done in the, in the first half. From Di Canio, well, I think he just uh, uh, needs to say to his, his front men, 
they need to commit themselves a, a, a little bit more because you know they've, they've got plenty of ball on the uh, on the edge of the 18 yard area or the flanks but there's not been a lot of movement inside the 18 yard yard area when uh, when the balls have come in so i think he'll be saying to benson and, and connor to take a few risks mm -hmm. well it's chesterfield at the moment trying to get forward but, uh, matt ritchie on the ball now for swindon maybe a risk can be taken before half time can either one of these teams go in with the lead at half time the ball all the way back to Tommy Lee there. It'd be a good time to score for either side at the moment as uh, we come close to the half-time whistle. The header there. And then Alex playing the ball through Bowery. Bowery retaining possession out wide to Mendy. Mendy now taking on the swing and defence. Alex Mendy, he got into this position earlier and had a good shot. This time he looks for Drew Talbot on the far side. And swing and get the ball clear at least for now. But it's Talbot again on the ball. Hurst in support. Square is Musa. The ball plays through instead to Westcott. Craig Westcar now back to Musa. Good support from the midfield here. Frank Musa now puts the cross into the edge of the penalty area. Mendy has to chase that one, and he's in turn is chased by Joe Devera. And he turns it back. Nathan Smith with his right foot plays the ball in and collected by Fabregas. Not a bad crossing from Smith on his wrong foot, of course, there. But uh, as I said earlier on, the, the Swindon defence, you can tell, is Rissa and McCormack are, are not, you know, died in the wall central defenders they do seem to be being pulled too wide the central defenders and i think that could become their undoing at some stage in the game well again anybody with any pace like jordan's got uh, hopefully that can pull the full center backs out of position and if that doesn't mean jordan bowley could score it might mean creating space for somebody else to score bothering them then with the ball down the field once again and it's nathan smith's header is that going to go out it is it's a swimming time throw on this near side of the field but a good bit of play from many there following the ball up making sure that the, uh, the midfielder couldn't uh, get hold of it and, and start an attack that's exactly what uh, John Sheridan will be wanting his players to do unfortunately the league didn't have done that as often as they could have done and the ball there well wide once again and Tommy Lee as you said earlier from Tommy Lee's been in trouble really in this first half all except for that incident with uh, Josh Thompson who, who obviously <laughs> obviously didn't be on purpose but uh, <laughs> a fantastic reaction save there from the Chesterfield goalkeeper and Fodderingham he had that one juggle didn't he and of course he was beaten with Jack Lester's shot which was ruled out for an earlier offside even though as we said a time or two it was uh, an error from the um, flag and in there with McEvely Playing the ball forward and out of play, right in front of John Sheridan. He gets his first kick of the game. Palace well, nice little sort of half volley there from, from Sheridan, isn't it, really? <laughs> Who, of course, apart from scoring the winner in the League Cup, played in the uh, FA Cup final and a replay. Uh, I know they're on the losing side, Sheffield Wednesday against Arsenal. Against Arsenal, yeah, that's right. Was that 93? 93, 93, I think. Uh, yeah, 91 was the win, 93 was the defeat. Mm -hmm. yeah. The field, and they, was it then that they beat Sheffield United in the semi at Wembley yes, as well? Yes, yes. Oh, right, yeah. So, Kevin Lee on the ball. Can't get past Drew Talbot with it though. Jonathan Smith. Slots it through nicely there to Connell and out wide to Lee Holmes on that far side. Holmes put it inside now from the challenge from Hurst. Smith, with Smith again after this near side of the field in there is Matt Ritchie and Ritchie gets a shot on target for Swindon but uh, again straight down the throat of the goalkeeper but, uh, one of Swindon's few on target efforts though. yes they're uh, few and far between but to be fair to Swindon the, the Chesterfield shots on target are few and far between as well it's been a, a little bit of a, a, a boxing contest hasn't it really sparring this first half and uh, both sides seemingly uh, afraid of making mistakes and I absolutely understand that yeah, I think uh, the, the first goal is going to be all important for either side, isn't it? And the way things are going at the moment, it doesn't look like it's going to change before half time unless some, somebody can do something fairly dramatic. And that was uh, Benson there, it's challenged by Thompson. The ball goes out wide to Holmes again on that far side of the field. And put in there straight away by Hurst. If there is a goal before half time, I think we wanted to miss it. We're in the uh, queues paying uh, top dollar for a burger. <laughs> I suppose you want a salad in the day like this, don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah. Mac there plays a long ball. It's a little bit too long there for Matt Richard to keep in play, I think. Well, he did keep it in play. I thought it might have gone out of the throw. It was a goal kick. Well, I, I have to say that uh, you know, I'm not going to say I'm disappointed with uh, Matt Richard because, of course, uh, you, know, you don't want him to get involved. But all the hype that there's been, 
and I was talking to Liam Reinhalch, the Chesterfield uh, player who had a spell on loan. Uh, yeah, you can see how, what Magenio thinks about <laughs> it. He's mocking can't his you? brow, isn't he? All this <laughs> so you yeah, yeah, Ryan Hulch has sort of said, which is the man. Yeah. Uh, he played at Swindon, that's why he's not able to play today. Cup time, having I mean, played for Swindon in the uh, earlier games against uh, Wimbledon. And uh, which is really not, uh, not, not done anything today. And again, once more, credit to that. Oh, yeah, Nathan absolutely. Smith. Credit to Nathan Smith for stopping that from happening. Now Mendy once more, taking on De Vera, twisting him one way, then the other. Tries to get the cross in, but. Uh, Swindon this time uh, stopped many from getting that crossing and now De Vera can bring the ball away so Mendy's we talk about the Swindon wide men but uh, Mendy's looked threatening at times and Chesterfield as well hasn't he in the first half yes it has Hurst with a good clearance there out of play that would have put, uh, had he missed that Lee Holmes would have been in on goal there so an important ball away there by Hurst and a throw to Swindon on the far side of the field as uh, Tony Bates blows for half time goalless here, Chesterfield nil, Swindon Town nil, and I would think both managers will have the uh, uh, plenty of opportunity to, to think of positives from uh, from that, and um, I, I, I think they'll be fairly similar half-time uh, discussions in the two dressing rooms as they troop off underneath where one of the captains will be lifting the trophy in either what an hour's time or. Uh, or an hour and a half time if it goes uh, beyond that. Well, this is it. If we stay at nil nil, of course, we'll have half an hour's extra time and, and possibly even penalties after that if it goes that far. So, Swindon to start the second half then. And, uh, Chesterfield nil, Swindon Town nil at half time here at Wembley. No changes uh, for either side. Of course, Westgar on for uh, Leicester for that uh, injury, which we've had confirmed was a groin injury. Kicking off for Swindon and uh, away we go at the start of this second half. Raymond Thompson. And, uh, Chesterfield is worth remembering now, and for, Swindon, and for Swindon for that matter, both playing towards their own supporters now. Yes, I'm sure that will give them uh, uh, a significant lift, Steve. So, the ball from Allett, right to uh, Nathan Smith on that far side of the field. In the back by Mendy, Smith, Sam Ford, moving ball to Thompson, patience from Chesterfield and play it across the back four, Hurst, tries to find that incisive ball through and that could be an incisive one, Bowering with the chance here, Bowering with the shot, and a great chance there for Chesterfield, the ball's still in play, the ball's still alive at the moment. Mendy, oh great twist there from Mendy, Mendy with the ball in, Westcar's going in there, yes. Westcar celebrates but it looks like it's Oliver Reeser that's put the ball in the back of the net, he head down straight away, Westcar made the run into the box, a great twist first of all from Alex Mendy on that far side of the field, took the defender out straight away, played the ball in and it looks as though, I thought it might have been Westcar that got the twist but I think it was actually the defender that put it over the goal line Phil. Well let's have a look here because uh, a lovely chest in there, from Westgar to Barry, good chance for him, safe from West Fodring and the first thing he's had to do, and just how important was that touch from Barry, just stuck a leg out, come to uh, Mendy there, there's a Cruyff turn look, onto his left foot in there, yes it's the Namibian Oliver Rissa that gets uh, touched to it, it looked first off as though it was Westgar, but you're quite right on the call there well, Steve. We'll see from this one. Yeah, there it goes, and yeah. nothing that Fodringham could do about that, lovely piece of play in uh, close control, look at that from uh, Mendy, yeah, fantastic. Superb. And uh, yeah, Westgar was uh, putting pressure on him. John Sheridan recognised that it's a goal there. Here comes uh, Mark Crossley. And uh, well, Swindon immediately trying to fight back. But first blood to the Spyrites. Well, first blood to the Spyrites. And we said that could be decisive. Let's hope from a Chesterfield point of view that it is decisive. Because the Spyrites now have the lead, own goal or not. I'm sure John Sheridan would be quite happy to take that uh, to lead here at Wembley. And uh, possibly with one hand now on the trophy. Well, just over a minute into the second half. And again, those uh, same people who've gone out for the buy the burgers, there's probably a few that not got back in time to, to have seen it. And the back I'll there, take your coat off now, Paolo, it's <laughs> given you no look so far. No, it hasn't, does it? We'll have to see what happens here as so Swindon have a free kick. And of course, Chesterfield with this lead on 47 minutes, but still a long way to go. And if Swindon were to equalise, of course, uh, there's still that uh, extra time looms then, but uh, we're a long way from that at the moment. You can see the Swindon fans just coming down the, uh, the steps now. The ball struck straight into the Chesterfield wall there, such as it was, and uh, Chesterfield get the ball away. And Cormac, so Risa, the man that scored for the Spyrites. That's uh, 
I can't name you any other Namibians who played in uh, in the football league. So I wonder what they're uh, shouting in Chesterfield's twin town of Sumag in Namibia. <laughs> out on that far side of the field in the Swindon Town throw quickly taken oh it's a sloppy ball mm. and picked up now by Drew Talbot and it's Hurst making a run to his right the short ball goes to Hurst and puts inside and finds Westcar and Westcar immediately under pressure from the Swindon defenders and Swindon will bring it forward again now the ball from uh, Smith there played through so again, picked up by Thompson now for Chesterfield. Well, Chesterfield looking half a yard quicker, aren't, aren't they? I know uh, uh, the goal will have helped that, but they were looking like that before they scored. And it's, but it's amazing what a bit of confidence can do, and they've certainly got that at the moment after that goal was scored. And uh, Mark Allett now on the ball. Out onto the far side, it's Nathan Smith though in attacking mode, isn't it? And the ball comes in and collected. And uh, Thompson with that by West Foldingham. Only 21 West Foldingham. One of five goalkeepers in the uh, Swindon Town squad, so Paolo obviously likes his goalkeepers. He's one of five in the squad. Well, I noticed in the programme notes they're, they're nicknamed Toothpick because he's got very thin legs. Um, <laughs> uh, to take a look at his legs next time uh, yeah. is a close up. That's Connell on the ball for Swindon now. So is that one back, and the cross comes in first time. It's a little ball by, Tom, uh, by Thompson, not once but twice to get it away to Talbot. I think it was Lee Hurst, uh, James Hurst, I think, with the header away. Now Drew Talbot plays it down the Chesterfield right. And yeah, the, like a foul, is it going to foul? No. Is it a foul? No, the referee allows play to continue. And Jamie Keverley brings the ball forward now for Swindon. Put the ball inside there to Ferry. Well, Chesterfield were just hoping to get through this next 15 minutes with no alarm bells really and then uh, at that point Swindon will have to start stretching it a little bit more won't they? So, well uh, this is it, let's hope so yeah because I mean they say you know you're, you're most vulnerable when you've just scored and that's the case for Chesterfield at the moment you know, very, it would be very easy to concede an equaliser but as the game goes on if they can keep us at 1-0 as you've just said if they can keep us at 1-0 for the next probably 10-15 minutes then the game, Swindon are going to get more and more desperate for an equaliser and hopefully perhaps leave a few holes at the back and uh, who knows what could happen then well, it'll be a test of uh, the Kenio's management. Uh, at what point does he press the panic button early and start perhaps making substitutions you know, uh, on, on, on the bench? Uh, Ronan Murray, the, back, the most attacking player that they've got on loan from Ipswich. They've got John Bostock on, who uh, it's his debut as well. Yeah, if another he, one if he were to come on, only yeah. sign on Thursday. Yeah. From Spurs, he's on loan from Spurs. Yeah. Swindon have the corner now, though, and a chance here for an equaliser as uh, the ball comes in from home. In fact, it's played short. And back again to Lee Holmes, and now Holmes with the drive across the Chesterfield penalty area there. And did Tommy Lee get a hand on that? No, no, it, uh, it hit the defender. I actually thought it hit the swimming player closest to the post, but it's gone out for a corner. No uh, mass appeal, so it was the defender who was on the near post. Didn't quite catch who it was. And the second bite then for Holmes. Actually, and uh, McEverly, this time McEverly's going to play the ball. He plays it in the low to Bruce Albert, who clears quite comfortably. West car. There's a lot on uh, West Car now, of course, he's uh, got 30 odd minutes less time in the heat than everybody else and of course the, uh, the sun will start to drop a little bit more in the second half so he's probably got more energy than some of those Swindon defenders. Which is a good point, yeah, let's hope he can use that to his advantage as uh, Jonathan Smith tries to play the ball across the Swindon midfield. Ferry plays that one forward, Connell now on the ball, playing out wide onto that far side, it's Richie. Again, doesn't get past Nathan Smith, he turns it back to his support in Joe De Vera. And then Richie on the ball. Now De Vera, now De Vera does get round the back of Nathan Smith and De Vera gets the cross in, but it's gone behind the line. And the goal kick is the result. Tommy Lee will be quite happy with that. Well good doubling up on Richie there. Mendy was there as well. And uh, well he had nowhere to go, did he? So he had to play the, the negative ball. From Chesterfield perspective, the uh, the, the right ball backwards. Should have got a Chesterfield fans that have bathed in there. Uh, in sunshine there. They'll be enjoying this. The league season put on one side for the for the moment. One nil up at Wembley, let's bounce. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I'm sure it's a, a great view for the Chesterfield team as well as they attack that Swindon goal. It's all the Chesterfield fans behind the goal there. And that's got to urge the Spyrites on surely to victory this afternoon. As the ball is played forward once more. And this time Jordan Bowery again trying to find mm. any loopholes in the Swindon defence, but Tim McCormack defended that one quite well. Well, it looks as though there was a bit of uh, lack of communication between McCormack and the goalkeeper. He was shouting for the keeper to come for it, and he didn't. 
So you can see, and he's just telling him there, time to come, come for it. Well, um, Di Canio talking to his uh, bench line. That's his assistant manager, uh, Fabrizio P Picaretta. Uh, no doubt telling him he might be thinking of uh, a few changes unless something goes his way. Yeah, just, just one finger in the air then. I don't know if that meant... That meant one minute before a substitute or one nil to Chesterfield. I'm not quite sure, but the ball played out onto that far side again to Ritchie now. A Swindon search for this equaliser. Ritchie taking on Nathan Smith, played the little ball inside to Ferry. Well, that's a great ball from Ferry back again for uh, Matt Ritchie and Smith alert to the danger. The flag has gone up. I think it's going to be a foul uh, in favour of Chesterfield. Good defending there from Nathan Smith. He was. He put his body in front of uh, Ritchie and won the foul as well. Absolutely. Fact, perfect. Great ball yeah. through there from Ferry and Ritchie would have been in there, but great defending there from Nathan Smith. Yes, uh, so he made his Jamaican debut in Honduras earlier on in the season, so that was a fantastic atmosphere. I don't think it'll compare with this, uh, no, no, I don't think it will. As uh, the header is won again by De Vera there. And uh, Swindon in possession again, as again they try and drive forward. Despite conceding that goal early in the second half, they still seem to be uh, quite happy to press and I mean they've got to press forward to look for an equaliser but they don't seem to have done anything too much to their confidence does it? No, uh, um, they've, they've really strung nothing together in this second half. A couple of corners they've they've won but uh, haven't threatened Tommy Lee's goal. The, the two fullbacks continue to do the good job that they were doing in the, the first half and Chesterfield after the uh, half-time break looked to be uh, a yard or two quicker than they were in the first half so things going the Sparrow's way at the moment but Swindon yeah, not quite runaway leaders at the top of League 2, but not far off. They've got a lot to offer, I'm sure. Uh, Chesterfield supporters there, you can see in good voice, and uh, why not? One they look at Wembley with uh, well into the second yeah, half, and uh, Bowie there flagged offside. So and a significant, a significant amount more than in Chesterfield's two previous uh, Wembley trips, where the, the total crowd was only sort of 22 and 25,000, 25 and then 22,000, I think. So uh, yeah. easily the most that have uh, gone to a Wembley match for Chesterfield and just two or three thousand less than went to Old Trafford in the FA Cup semi-final. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah. A third of the distance away in a massive match in its own right. Well, Swindon trying to keep the ball in the play there. Kick. Was that a goal no, kick? No, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, Connell doesn't it's think so. Connell, but Connell's it, not happy. Oh, oh, a and, yellow uh, card for Alan Connell. <laughs> I'm looking for Connell. Well, he talked his way into that, the first booking of the, the game. Yeah, I think it is, and he did talk his way into that, certainly. The reaction there was, uh, I suppose the referee would regard it as dissent and there. Well, I thought I saw the bounce off his leg. Let's have a look, we'll have a look here. So, oh, well, there, no. Holmes was blocking the way, wasn't Holmes. he? You couldn't really, yeah. uh, couldn't really tell. Holmes is actually about it. <laughs> <isn't he? laughs> Connell's convinced. <laughs> but it's a goal kit, I'd like some shine, I'd look. Ferry then, plays the ball to Risa. So De Vera rather, uh, slots that one through again to Holmes who's uh, popping up on that other side of the field again at the moment. Oh, a great challenge from Smith. Smith's done really well against Ritchie and he's kept him quiet as he's going through the whole game. Following him on the edge of his own penalty area. So he wants the ball downfield. Yeah, his legs are quite thin aren't they? I can see the toothpick thing now. <laughs> Had a forward there and again Chesterfield just doing enough. At the back, but it's again Swindon in possession. The cross coming in this time, and a good save there from Tommy Lee. Just before the, a cluster of the players behind him, any one of whom could have put that one into the net. But uh, good save there from the Chesterfield goalkeeper. Yeah, his confidence has really grown in the time he's been at uh, at Chesterfield. Brought from his, uh, his debut at Barnet, when no doubt Joe De Vera was playing in that game. The Swindon mm, yeah, yeah. He conceded a free kick from outside his own, you know, in, in Barnet's own half, didn't he? Mm. Yeah. And uh, but ever since then, uh, grown and grown and grown in strength. And uh, certainly the most popular goalkeeper has been at, uh, at Chesterfield for some time. Well, Alec plays the short ball to Hurst. He's down the line looking again for Bowery. Who, who was he instructed there by McCullough? Mm -hmm. The referee and linesman don't seem to think so. I think the referee's done all right. Uh, all right, the linesman made the error on the, uh, on the Chesterfield goal, but I think Tony Bates has done pretty well. Um, you know, he's kept the game. Uh, kept the game moving and uh, didn't mind a bit of a push and a shove, he's not blowing at everything, so I think he's doing all right. Bowery, Ryan McEverley at the back, Swindon left back, Jay McEverley, Thompson for Chesterfield, and Musa. He's got to turn and get the ball forward, but it's out of play, unfortunately, for Chesterfield, and again on this near side. 
Kevin the Kevin Lee comes across to take the throw in. Yeah, Moose added that uh, uh, heart in the centre of midfield after David Davis was recalled by uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Went straight back into their first team, or straight into their first team for the first time. But Moose has uh, done pretty well in that gap. Yeah, Davis was very impressive uh, in his time at Chesterfield, but I think the biggest compliment you can pay Moose is we haven't really missed Davis that much. Mm -hmm. Moose has done pretty well so far. And Kevin plays the ball forward and into swing, and again it goes out of play. And oh, <laughs> is that some sort of divine penny intervention penny, uh, he's looking for? Penny for your thoughts, Parlo. <laughs> well, I thought it's almost worth the entrance fee just to watch him, isn't he? Yeah, we're all jumping around in the, in the area, in this technical area. Oh. Yeah, slick there. On the ball somewhere. That sums Richie's afternoon up really yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. So Chesterfield to throw in. And again, <laughs> Canio showing his frustration there at his players. So, Nathan Smith to take the throw. Still Chesterfield 1, Swindon Town 0. Courtesy of the, the recent own goal. Chesterfield getting forward again now. This is Drew Talbot on the ball. Gets round one chance. Played the short ball to Musa. Out onto this near side of the field now. Chesterfield looking to get forward there with the Hurst. And Musa once again. James Hurst, the man back, is now well out of position, of course. Just the, right, you know, just the right sort of football for Chesterfield, this. Little ball through there from Thompson and a chance for Westcar. And Westcar pulls it wide. Just real opportunities, had since coming on for Jack Lester, real good opportunity there from Craig Westcott. And a little, good little ball through by Thompson, well spotted by Thompson. And Westcott seemed to do everything right other than the accuracy of the shot. Well, I don't know how many passes there were strung together in the, the head of that shot from Chesterfield's number nine, probably 10 or 15, but to keep the ball, let Swindon chase shadows. And, uh, you know, John Sheridan so often this season has talked about uh, keeping the ball and that was a perfect example of how to do it properly. Yeah, let's hope we can see some more after this, as this second half wears on. As, uh, hopefully we can tie a swing in out like that as well. So, ball over on that far side of the field now, just crossing the halfway line, and Mendy battling there on the far side. But the ball playing back to West Fotheringham, and the swinging goal in the swinging penalty area. The ball downfield. And Tom can just slip there, and he recovered well. Smith, Nathan Smith, goes forward and now it's uh, McEverly, almost from one left back to the other, all the way back now to Fotheringham again. Connell, back in there against Simon Ford, who's uh, also done pretty well against the spinning forwards. Now to the throwing, John Sheridan with the ball there to Nathan Smith. Well, Simon Ford's just got on quietly and confidently with his game hasn't he uh, uh, a lot of the headers uh, see Thompson going out to win them but Ford's always just there positioned alongside mm -hmm. ready to sweep up uh, any bits and I don't think he's done anything wrong at all in the entire game apart, no, apart from hit the, hit the bar when he should have scored <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, just a bit of a free kick here I think oh, no, it's... I think there, you know, there's a yeah, substitution, Risa, yeah. Yes, the first, uh, first substitution by Swindon Town. Paolo Di Canio decides eventually to make a change, and it's the Chesterfield goal scorer, that tour at Oliver Risa, the man that put it through his own net, who uh, goes off. So it's two goal scorers off now, Jack Lester and uh, Oliver Risa. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, oh, oh he, uh, he shook his head uh, yeah. away then when he was uh, patted there, obviously not very happy, and nobody wants an OG next to the, to the name, but there's nothing he could do about it. Quite clear who came on. I think it was Ron Murray. Yeah, Murray has uh, come on for uh, Murray's piece. So, bothering him um, with the ball, looking to launch it downfield, but Westcar stopping him from going too far with it. Well, it's an attacking player on for a defender, so uh, to see how Swindon regroup to that. Is it uh, panic stage already? I think it's a little bit early to panic, but it looks as though that's what they've done. Well, he's an Italian Phil Picanio. Used to panicking, aren't they? If anybody can do it for Paolo, can I'm sure they're headed away there by Simon Ford at the back for Chesterfield. And a good turn there by Jordan Bowery. Bowery now taking the game to swing in here. Bowery trying to use his pace, but Guevara goes with him, gets between Bowery and the ball and plays it back to his goalkeeper. Westcar tries to pressurise Fotheringham immediately. And a quick ball out there 
again to Devera. And again, good pressure from Chesterfield. First of all from Jordan Bowery, then from West Coral, the goalkeeper, and then again from Jordan uh, out on that touchline. Well, I think it looks like he's just gone to three at the back. Mm. Can you so, uh, so the 3-4-3 three, three type of look. Yeah, so Murray then on for Risa, and uh, as uh, you say, for three at the back now as uh, Swindon throw the dice and try and search for this equaliser. They've been searching most of this second half for it so far. It's not come as yet. Tommy Lee still not really been stretched yet. Will he be here as Holmes and uh, Connell do the one two? Holmes, oh, Holmes slips there right at the last minute. He does get the ball in though. He makes his cross in the end before Hurst can get to him. Swindon still can't capitalise from it and the drive mm. eventually there is well over the bar. And it's, uh, is that Connell? No, it's uh, Richie again, isn't it? It's, uh, put the bar. It was a good head away from four from the initial cross. He controlled it very well there, Richie. Left footed but high and wide, and uh, never any danger for the Chesterfield rear guard. And urging his teammates on there. And as, uh, Tommy Lee takes the goal kick in front of the mast. Swindon fans behind his goal. Jordan Bowie now slotted through nicely there. Bowie with his back to goal, he's got support. And the ball goes across towards the goalkeeper and Fotheringham, and the ball hooked over the bar. Was it Mendy? I think it was Alex Mendy with the final shot, it was. It was uh, Moose's cross from the right hand side, got into some uh, a, a good position there. That's probably the furthest right he's been. Lovely cross in, and the overhead uh, effort after the uh, pour away by the goalkeeper, always high. But he had a little opportunity to do uh, too much with that. There's Fottingham gets the touch. He just knocked it too high, didn't he? On that yeah, first quite touch. similar to the Connell one in the first mm -hmm. half, wasn't it? But with a little bit better accuracy than uh, Alan, Alan Connell managed. And uh, Hurst there having to get rid quite quickly under pressure. Swindon get the throw on this near side of the field. So you can see how many men there are throwing forward there in the red shirts of uh, Swindon Town. And I think that could only work in, uh, in Chesterville's favour if they keep the heads. Yeah, well, I think we're approaching 20 minutes of this second half now, so it won't be, won't be long before we're halfway through, uh, halfway through this half, and uh, of course, Swindon, as the, t as the clock ticks down, they will get more and more desperate. If they don't find an equaliser soon, we'll be getting more and more desperate for it. It's Holmes again on the ball, down the Swindon left, taking on hers. This time he does get the cross in. Oh, it got all the way through there. It went past Connell, and uh, almost towards Benson, but Simon Ford, was the man that got in there. Well, he made the intervention forward, he put it over his own uh, bar, Swindon had quite a few corners, and not looked uh, ridiculously dangerous from any of them. They have played a lot of them short, and got that second ball in from the corner of the 18-yard area. What's Holmes going to do this time? Holmes with the ball in once more then. And it reached, oh. well, it, I think it reached Connell there, and again, they're appealing that it should be another corner. It's uh, clearly off. Uh, Devera, I think, there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, it was a corner, yeah no, there was no Chesterfield player any near, anywhere near that. And he's still praying, Fowling. So, uh, two. <laughs> it was one finger up last time, it's yeah, two now. now it's so. two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, there you go. It shows his emotion, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, very much heart yeah. on the sleeve. He's got plenty of sleeves on today. Uh, John <laughs> Sheridan was shielding the sun from his eyes. He'll be... Uh, Pretty much the happier of the two in the time. West Carl was chasing that one, but running uh, him quickly off his line to claim that one. And the ball was shepherded back there by Devera. Bodring him with the ball downfield once more for the Robins. That's a play. Well, we think Chesterfield will be pretty happy with the circumstance at the moment. They've looked the better side since the goal in the early moments of the second half. Swindon continuing to threaten, but uh, Tommy Lee, well, he's been pretty quiet. He's had a a lot more busier afternoon than this in the league this season. Absolutely. This show, doubt, of course, he had a very busy uh, day at Preston in the, um, in the build up to Wembley and an even busier one against Oldham in the two legs of the Northern final. So a, lot to, uh, a lot to thank him for for getting this one. And as far as, as far as this match is concerned, Swindon looked really strong before, uh, just before half time. And, uh, you feared that they may be the ones that scored the goal first in the second half, but it's worked in Chesterfield's favour. They've got the early goal, and it's, it seems to have taken a little bit of the sting out of Swindon Town at the moment. And as I say, as time goes on now, uh, risks are going to have to be taken in search of an equaliser. I think Holmes was unlucky on that uh, challenge on Talbot there. Uh, Chesterfield will be delighted with 
getting that burning up another 20 seconds take the threat of a cross from Holmes who's been the most dangerous Swindon player on uh, on show this afternoon Tommy Lee with the goal kick and free kick Graham Swanning on that one, isn't it? So, could be Sri Lanka, but no doubt keeping tabs on his good friend yeah. uh, Jack Lester. See how he's going on. Well, James Hurst with the throw for Chesterfield. Okay, short ball gets the return. And West Carl. And, uh, this time Swindon head clear. Not making a challenge. Run on by Musa. And then Devere goes to backtrack. And, well, the defending, high defending, the high line defending from the Chesterfield front two has been pretty good all afternoon. They've uh, forced for Swindon into I don't know how many back passes. Okay, back again by Chesterfield. And Kevily. That's the return ball from uh, Ferry. And yeah, Richie made there. a nail of that. The ball was already out there, when, looking, he, uh, when he jumped. Yeah, and looking for the free kick. And James Hurst penalised. Swindon will have the free kick. Yeah, Tony Bates, the referee, giving that one to Swindon Town. Yeah, they they just took it too quickly. They're panicking. They've already started. They've seen the manager uh, probably starting to panic a little bit. The substitution we've either seen Murray in the game no, has, uh, uh, has been a bit of a panic, yeah. and the players are now starting to panic. Well, it's all good news for Chesterfield. As Frank Musa now has possession for the Spirax. The ball they forward again. Looking for Bowery and struggles to keep it in play. Well, does he keep it in play? Oh. No, it's out eventually. See, look at it. They took the frame that quickly. He's not looked yeah. where he took it. They're, they're just playing too quickly now. The manager should be telling them to calm down and start playing football again, like they were in the back end of the first half. All, all grist to the mill for Chester. Well, how can you tell your players to calm down if you can't calm down yourself? <laughs> yes, I suppose that's, <laughs> that's true. Yes. James Hurst on the ball again for Chesterfield. Plays it forward. And is it going out of play this time? No. James Kevley saves it, keeps the ball alive, plays it to his captain Alan McCormack. And looks for options further forward. McCormack hits the long ball out again to Holmes on this swing in left, but again Hurst gets the better of him. Doing a terrific game for us. And now Mendy. This could be interesting. Alex Mendy now if he's got the pace to get. Oh, he's played the ball in there just a little bit too soon and they're well covered there by McCormack who plays it back to his goalkeeper before West Carl or Bowery could do any damage. And again, Westcar's pressing made him uh, play it back. And he's got a fine by Smith, no advantage. And again, Swindon on the attack oh. here. And that was Murray that played the ball in, I think, and it's high and wide of the uh, Chesterfield goal. Did, the yeah, relief yeah. of Tommy Lee and the Chesterfield supporters. I'm sure they're delighted at this stage of the game. Over halfway now through this second half, Chesterfield still lead by this one goal to nil. One hand on the Johnson Paints trophy. Yes, and that uh, well. They don't look uh, all that happy. He's spotted himself on the big screen. Oh, uh, oh, that's John Bostock coming on. who uh, will be fed up to the back teeth of uh, Chesterfield already. This season came on as an early, early substitute for Jermaine Johnson at the B2 net for yeah, Sheffield Wednesday. And right. uh, that was actually the last game he played, the last senior game he played. So, uh, well, if we get the same result yeah, well, this time round. Yeah, we'll be happy at the moment. Let's, let's see what happens now. John Bostock then replacing Jonathan Smith. So, John Bostock comes on the Betty's relief to get on the field and away from Paolo <laughs> as well with all the all the ranting and raving. So John Bostock then on loan for Spurs and uh, as Phil's already said, he's also played for Sheffield Wednesday, I think four games on loan for the Owls, uh, one of which was against Chesterfield and that one nil win at the oh. B2 net stadium and a slip there by McCormack and Westcar's in here, Westcar! Oh. Craig Westcar, he didn't come off the did he come off the goalkeeper? I don't think he did. I think he's dragged it wide. But a slip there by the Swindon captain, Alan McCormack, could have proved very, very costly indeed. That could have been game over. Let's have a look at this here. Well, Westcar will be hoping now that this isn't a decisive moment. He'll desperately want in his uh, side to hold on now because that will haunt him for a long, long time if Swindon get back into this game and uh, get in front. He did everything right on the slip from the uh, Swindon captain for the final delivery. And, uh, well, he'll be feeling that. His heart will be beating at ten to the dozen at the moment. And, uh, well... You've just said a few moments ago, Steve, one hand on the, the trophy. It could have been two, I think, at that moment in time. But yeah. Craig Westcar shot there. Yeah, absolutely. That could have finished it, couldn't it? 
Swindon, as you said, haven't looked that dangerous going forward at times. Tommy Lee hasn't been pressed too much uh, in this second half. And a second goal for Chesterfield there would surely have, have finished Swindon off. But uh, it would have been nice to see Paolo's reaction, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it's not happened yet. It's still Chesterfield on the attack, though, as Bowery plays that one in. West Card going towards it, but uh, collected again by the goalkeeper. And a big kick downfield from Fotheringham, looking for his forwards, Benson, and now to Connell. Alan Connell tried the first time shot, it was blocked first time as well by Hurst. Mm -hmm. It was James Hurst that makes the clearance to up towards the halfway line. The header then from Ferry. Now Mendy over on the Chesterfield left. And of course, John Sheridan will be uh, starting to think about substitution now. Not because his team aren't playing well, though. Here's the chance again to slip from uh, McCormack there. He gets into his right foot, just drags it wide. Yeah, they didn't take it, didn't get oh, anything. Oh, and there's the a reaction from the manager. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I thought maybe the goalkeeper got a touch, but obviously that would have been a corner, and it's not happened. And uh, Westcott did indeed drag it wide, so let's hope that man, and most people will say, that man would have scored that goal, so <laughs> let's hope uh, Chesterfield gets some salvation, at least in a, in a win this afternoon. It's only 1 0, still plenty of time yet for Swindon to equalise, and if they did, it would be extra time, of course, as well, so this game's certainly not over at this point. Paul Mitchell, the Chiefs get in front of Jack Lester, and the skipper, cup tied Neil Trotman, just behind him. and caught a glimpse of Mark Randall on the bench he's uh, not featured in the first team since October no that's right and, uh, he's, he's on the bench this afternoon he can Dwyer, uh, just received some uh, some treatment oh to his nose so I didn't see anything uh, there the referee Mr Bates having a chat with uh, Westcar uh, maybe Westcar so, oh yeah so he's uh, a bit of an altercation with Westcar possibly there or maybe we'll see something oh, oh he's just pushed him in the face there he's, uh, He's getting away. Oh, oh, right. Oh, bit of shirt pulling and a bit of all sorts. Well, I think uh, Westgar thought he was uh, fouled himself, blocked, and then uh, swung round. Well, I don't think the referee saw that. How no. much of that? How much of that is the frustration at missing that shot on goal? Oh, I would think uh, almost total. Um, it will be bothering him. There's no two ways about that. As the uh, Swindon physio, Paul Godfrey, treats uh, his defender so momentarily. Swindon down to ten men and two defenders. <laughs> two at the back is not. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't get any more attacking than that, can you? So. Well, if uh, later on, if there's two at the back, I think I mean there's not very long left. And <laughs> just with this still in the lead. So. Well, Swindon play down onto this left-hand side again, and against Lee Holmes taking on Hurst, cuts inside. He gets his ball this time through to his teammate Murray and Holmes oh. again. And no power in that one really. They combine well there with Murray and Lee Holmes again causing problems. But when Holmes got the final shot in, he didn't really get any power behind it at all, and it wasn't that difficult for Tommy Lee to claim. Well, it was like a back pass, wasn't it? That uh, did everything right. He found the space on the left hand side of the 18 yard box, received the ball, again. but uh, a tame shot from, from the guy from South Normanton. Header from Hurst. And so that's it, bounce then tries to get the head on it. And then Murray knocks it through and then Ferry. And then Devera. Simon Ferry once more. Swindon playing ball across the midfield. Looking to get red shirts up in numbers as they try and make this attack with a search for the sequelizer. Holmes with the cross in towards the back there and an important header away. I think it was Mendy Mendy, back yeah. there, wasn't he? They got that one away. Out for the throw to Swindon Town on the far side. Swindon creating some more pressure now. And the Swindon fans doing their job trying to raise. Oh, I'm not happy with uh, what it was. Is going to be a substitution here? The throwing is certainly delayed. Yeah, the substitution. The, yes, yeah. indeed. Jamie Cavalli going to the touchline. And Alessandro Cibocci going on, who's uh, been a, one of the regular left backs along with Callum Kennedy this season. I would imagine he's a little bit hacked off that he didn't start. And quite rightly so. Yes, indeed. Cibocci then on. So is that Carlos third substitution? It is. It's uh, put Bostock and Ooh. Murray already on. Dangerous ball in. Um, Benson couldn't quite get to that one, so Tommy Lee happy to see it fly out for a goal kick. Well, I think with under 15 minutes remaining, uh, Paolo Di Canio has used all three of his substitutes now. So uh, if this, day, this game does, does go to extra time, there's certainly going to be uh, some tired legs in this winning team. Well, outfield, uh, Chester have still got uh, Danny Whitaker and. Uh, Scott Bowden and Mark Randall on the uh, on the bench. Greg Fleming, of course, the keeper as well. So the ball played forward again by Swindon Town. Connell gets possession of it, lays it off once more to Holmes. First time ball inside to Murray. 
Mona Murray stumbles under the challenge from Frank Musa and Swindon have a free kick in a good position, right on the edge of the penalty area. Musa not happy when he's conceded the free mm. kick. Mm. And again, an opportunity here for Swindon to find this mm. such a valuable equaliser. Definitely clipped his, uh, his heels there, Musa. And a soft free kick to concede. Tommy doing the uh, direct in that way. Yeah, we can see where it is. Drew Talbot receiving the communications. Musa and Mendy either side of him. And uh, Chibotchi standing over the ball. He's going to deliver it in. Holmes on one side, Chibotchi the other. And it is Chibotchi. It took a deflection off the wall. And the wall's done its job as uh, Westcar chases and clears the chest of out of play, Paolo has it quickly back in play there. And the pullback brings it forward now. It's high and long, and all the way through to Tommy Lee in the Chesterfield goal will take the pressure off the spotlights. Well, they've uh, thrown extra men forward, Swindon have, and they've had a little bit more of the possession in the last 10 minutes, 15 minutes since uh, Murray came on, but they've not really looked threatening. Chesterfield, it's a slender 1 0 advantage, but it does look as though the spotlights could punish. Swindon on the break, they're uh, leaving more and more gaps, not only uh, at the back but in the middle as well, Swindon, as they push everybody forwards. Well, this is what's got to happen now, isn't it, as far as Swindon are concerned, they need the equaliser from somewhere and uh, uh, gaps will appear at the back and mistakes can happen and uh, let's hope Chesterfield can try and capitalise on that. But, uh, an equaliser for Swindon, of course, it will be disastrous for Chesterfield, another half hour will be uh, potentially possible then. As uh, Swindon get it forward again, only as far though as Musa, who's battling well in the midfield this afternoon for Chesterfield. Forward by Hurst, a high ball with uh, Bowery underneath it, but uh, McCormack as well plays it back to his goalkeeper, West Fotheringham. Back to uh, McCormack on this near side of the field. His uh, defenders are fairly sparse back there, aren't they, Phil? You've got to say that I think there is only two at the back, even now. <laughs> one is Devera, the other one is uh, McCormack. Oh. See there in the Chesterfield pack midfield, defending really well on that high line. I've said that before, and the uh, two uh, players go for the same header, but at least one of them in it. Close on the side and Chesterfield throw, which uh, James Hurst will take. Chibotti then, the uh, Italian, signed from Italy. And another substitution for uh, going on for Chesterfield this Frank time. Frank Lusa yeah, coming yeah, off. Indeed, Frank Lusa coming off. He'll enjoy his uh, day out, I'm sure. High fives with fellow French speaker Alex Mendy and Mark Randall, oh, the Mark forgotten Randall. man, yeah. coming on. Yeah. Former Arsenal player Mark Randall, who uh, joined Chesterfield last summer. And uh, as you said, Phil, he's not had a lot of first team opportunities with injuries and everything else, but uh, he comes on the field now at Wembley. Big game. And the right sort of opposition for him as well. You know, a, a team that does try and pass and play. It's his game, pass and play. So uh, let's see if he can cement him his place into a bit of Chesterfield history in what for him has been a pretty disappointing personal season and a team season as well. JPT apart, of course. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but at least uh, John Cherry must change it like for like, hasn't he? Midfield to midfield. In fact, central midfield to central midfield. So we'll see what happens now. The shape of the team stays the same. Randall is on for Musa and Swindon currently are in possession. Well, they were the ball going out of play. Yeah. Yes, it is. Randall get a tackling. And of course, with numbers being short at the back for Swindon, the accuracy of Randall's passing is one of the uh, things that no doubt John Sheridan's got in mind. Yeah. Well, so well, looking tense, aren't they? Capitalise on that, yes, some nervous Swindon faces there as, uh, as time ticks away and the clock's starting to sort of go against Swindon Town now, they trail still, Chesterfield 1, Swindon Town nil here at Wembley, and uh, not that long to go now, I don't think, Maybe about 10 minutes, possibly a little bit less. As, uh, the ball goes back to Tommy Lee in the Chesterfield goal. And, uh, well, he's wasted up every uh, second for Benson and Alan Connell there, the front men, getting very, very little change from Ford and uh, Thompson. The two wingers, Richie and Holmes, getting very little. And the two fullbacks, Smith and Hurst, and all four of them at the back, can uh, look on pretty good 80 minutes opening uh, to this Wembley occasion. Yeah, indeed. Let's not forget Swindon are top of League Two, and they've been scoring quite a few goals against some of the League Two opposition. But uh, Chesterfield defence has held really strong, and uh, despite the, the difficult season the Spartans have had this season, uh, the defence has held well today against the top team in League Two, basically. Mm -hmm. Of course, last season in this competition, Chesterfield beat Walsall and 
did everything but beat Sheffield Wednesday, didn't they? So mm -hmm. uh, we were expected similar perhaps from Swindon. Sacking again there is Smith, uh, another vital intercept. Well done, Nathan Smith, and Matt Ritchie again, but down that right hand side. It's Mendy there getting back into position, and the Chesterfield supporters there yeah. urging the team on now. A bit more animated than the Red Hearts. Yeah, they're they? sensing the victory now, Chesterfield supporters. Let's hope they can stick to that as John Bostock tries to get possession. But it's Chesterfield, Mark Randall on the ball now. Randall turns inside after one challenge. Oh, it was a poor ball from yeah, Randall. He really. slipped as a globe, didn't he? And again, an opportunity for Swinning to so create something from this is very much the ball wide onto that far side. Mendy gets there before Richie can though. The ball stays in play as Westcott turns it back to Mendy once more. And Alex Mendy now trying to use his pace to get through those yeah. challenges. So he was his arms a little bit. I think uh, the two fullbacks and Mendy have all played as well as they have done in a Chesterfield shirt in their uh, you know all of their brief uh, Chesterfield careers I think today. Well, Lee Holmes again now coming in from the left hand side in a much more central position. The ball laid back there by Connell. Bostock plays it wide onto this near side and again the ball played in deep into the Chesterfield penalty area headed away that time by Josh Thompson Biocci on the uh, left at the moment for Swindon as uh, Lee Holmes came inside there is Guevara on the ball now though and Murray and uh, Alice almost blocking and uh, did so there trying to set Bowery up but uh, McCormack doing enough there to did well they got the ground bowery and kept the ball in play get it downfield as well now Mark Allett on the ball once more turn back to Nathan Smith who puts the high ball forward Bowery stretching to make that one De Vera now for Swindon is it back to the goalkeeper no he risked something there didn't he and uh, now it's Cibocci the Italian hanging it through so put out again well by the Chester right back by James Hurst I didn't say it was offside uh, the flag goes I think against Craig Westbrook. one of these ridiculous things of wait until the guy touches it before you put your flag up well that's great for Chester because it wasted a second or two but it was always going to be offside there. Yeah. Alessandro Cibotti again plays it forward Swindon with uh, Holmes now back on the left hand side and again Hurst there putting the ball out of play for a Swindon throw Holmes takes it quickly Talbot forward to Jordan Bowery Bowery now what a day he's having today playing at Wembley at uh, after the season he's had, and there's still Bowery there, which is snuffed out eventually by too many defenders. Yeah, still only 20, Jordan, of course. Uh, but remember that. Bostock hits it long this time, and too long. All the way back to Tommy Lee. And uh, he's starting to get the sense now that Swindon are really starting to get a bit desperate. Well, they've uh, shown very little in the last 20 minutes or so after they've uh, thrown people uh, forward, and that's down to the Chesterfield middle four and back four not allowing them uh, in it's a remarkable performance from Chesterfield so far against a team that is absolutely full of confidence or were before three, uh, two o'clock this afternoon how much do you think that might damage their second division championship hopes do you think this afternoon no, I don't think it will I think they'll be able to uh, get back in as Chesterfield will be able to get back into thinking about legal and survival as Scott Bowden prepares uh, to come on well, he's another one, Scott Bowden, another youngster that's uh, in the, the Bowery mould. In fact, it's Jordan Bowery that's coming off to mm. be replaced, isn't it? So Scott Two great Bowden, mates. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Scott's telling him, slow it down, look. don't come off too quickly, Jordan. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and the fourth official uh, uh, having a bit of a laugh with him on that. Two great mates together. Well, that says it all if you're a Swindon fan, doesn't it, really? Yeah. Tense times if you're a Swindon Town fan this afternoon. And, uh, yeah. Powell's tick power seems to have calmed down a little bit, doesn't he? Has mm -hmm. he accepted defeat, do you think? I'm sure he hasn't, and if he has accepted defeat, he, uh, he shouldn't be standing in the, in the dugout. Well, Chesterfield have a throw on this near side of the field. It's James Hurst with it. An opportunity again you know, for, to really nail it for the Spyrites this afternoon. It comes off Bowden and Swin and get it clear. And to the midfield. It's a very on the ball, I think, there. And it's a decent ball too out to the right. Richie's made the run. And uh, Nathan Smith goes across as well. The cross comes in this time. He's headed away at the back by uh, Josh Thompson. So he might get a second bite at this, but Nathan Smith pressurising. And the header again this time by Hurst. I think they got it clear. And so through to Drew Talbot. Now Talbot, 50-50 yeah, challenge there with uh, Alessandro Cibotti. And uh, the mm -hmm. play for a swing and throw. Two crosses in from Richie. I think that's just about double his tally for the afternoon, isn't it? Oh, it's a free kick against 
told that she was going to get the foul, but no, I thought he was going to give the throw in, but yeah, you're right, it's a free kick, and it's Lee Holmes to uh, deliver this one. Again, the Chesterfield defence under pressure, another opportunity for Sweden to find the equaliser, Ooh. and that one was heading right onto the crossbar, I don't know if Tommy, I think Tommy got a touch on that. Yeah, oh, he's saying, yeah, well, he's saying he didn't, but... Um, it looked that way, let's see here what happened, the ball header. in there. Well, it took one movement, didn't it? Was it off the top of the bar? Well, he might have it's, got a touch to it, might have been the bar. It wasn't it's, going to go in, even if he got anyway. a touch. The referee agrees with us, Phil, anyway, Tommy did get a touch, and the ball played in from the corner kick, well defended by Chesterville, quickly out in the Cormac now. Not gone up this time, he's stayed back, hasn't he, as the ball has played wide towards Holmes on this near side, but it was a poor ball and an easy one to let go out for the goal kick. So, again, a few more valuable seconds wasted for... Uh, Chesterfield. Yeah, it's, the trophy's getting ever nearer, isn't it? To Chesterfield looking to become the 21st different victors of this tournament. It started in 83 84 as the Associate Members' Cup. It's been through a thing called the Freight Rover Trophy, Sherpa Van Trophy, Leyland Daft Cup, Auto Glass Trophy, Auto Windscreen Shield, LDV Vans Trophy, and since 07 in the Johnston's Paint Trophy. Any foreigner they didn't know would think we have so many trophies <laughs> in this country, don't you? It's all the same. Isn't it? And he's a trophy of shield. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mendy's on the ball now. Mendy jinking between the two defenders there. Alex Mendy, could he go all the way? Not quite. Swing and get it from him eventually and get the ball clear. But Mendy looked very dangerous there. And that again would have finished it for Swindon Town as they search desperately now for this equaliser. Richie gets the ball into mm. the penalty area. Benson. And uh, the ball going out there is the goal kick. Yeah, it is. It looked like a ball against Benson today, but uh, not given. That's a goal kick to the Spy Rights. And we'll be looking at that clock on the big screen. Can't get away from it. I thought Benson's been kept quite a fairly quiet as well this afternoon, hasn't he? Oh, he's hardly had a kick. Credit to the Chesterfield defenders oh. for that. Oh, there's Paolo looking. He's, he's moved. He's uh, put his hat on now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're into stoppage time, time now, and uh, I think there's four minutes. I think he said four minutes yeah. of stoppage time. So four minutes in which Swindon need to find an equaliser. Desperate time if you're a Swindon Town supporter. Four minutes for Chesterfield to hang on to this lead to win this Johnson Peach Trophy. And Swindon in possession at the moment. The ball played through to Murray. Right to the near side of the field. Sabotti, I think. Uh, Taking it forward, Ben Holmes, well knocked back by Connor. It's Lee Holmes again, looking in a more central position, out wide onto that far side once more. And oh, Smith, what a challenge! Great tackle there from Nathan Smith. Oh, and and Richie Olo, uh, get up, he says to, to Richie. It was as clean as a whistle, that challenge. It was a good challenge, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. Whether whether Richie's hurt or not, there's no way that's a foul. That was, that was a, a good challenge there from Nathan Smith. Well, and Richie's wasting his own time, basically, yeah. at the moment, isn't he? I think Paolo's telling him to get up. Now let's have a look at this. It was a, oh, he's overhit it. Brilliant challenge from yeah, he's played a, Nathan Smith. Yeah, played a the great League ball. Two Player of the Year. Yeah, he's telling him to get up. Look, get up. He knows it was a fair yeah, tackle. He knows that the, the trainers had to go on. Uh, Paul Godfrey's had to go on, so he can't be part of the uh, the immediate move from the throw-in. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. and the clock's going against Swindon now all the mm. time. I know stoppage time can be added onto stoppage time yeah. for incidents like this, but. So, it's, if, if Swindon did have any momentum, it disrupts that. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. No, uh, so, well, that's what it's like. Welcome to League One. Uh, probably tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt Ritchie, the 22 uh, year old, who started at Portsmouth. He's also played for Dagenham and Redbridge in Notts County. And uh, Swindon Town on loan before he went to the Sharon got a bit of paper in his hand. Is that a fan? Just to fan him down in the warm weather. He looks he's pretty calm. He looked cool. I think that man needs the fan. Yeah. He doesn't look cool, he looks hot under the collar in more ways than one at the moment. Mm -hmm. he can. You know, well, Richie knows he's been in a tackle there. It's, and after all that, it's a throw into Swindon. That was a great moment, that uh, um, tackle. Yeah. Enjoyed that. Well, the throwing comes in now, and Chesterfield again needs to concentrate in these dying moments of the game. Mendy tries Ooh. to get a foot on that one. And Mendy does indeed get a foot on it. He brings the ball away and sends it down the field nicely. Chased by Scott Bowden and uh, Fodderingham there, having to improvise out of his outside his penalty area. And now Randall. Ball out wide onto this one. Right hand space. side, Drew Talbot in lots of space, yes indeed, keeps it in play. And sends it back. 
Tim Hurst who lifts it into the edge of the penalty area and it's only for uh, this time the uh, defender to get it clear. A bit of an experience from Hurst, so he ought to probably played it back or something like that. And, uh, like Smith is going to do here, that's the right thing. Yeah. Just um, Tommy Lee with the ball straight away downfield and out of play. He could be a swinging throw. We can hear the Chesterville fans whistling, a bit of uh, resignation there on the uh, swimming town bench. Oliver Rissa there, who got the OG just, uh, just over a minute into the start of the second half that put Chesterfield on the way, and that's the only goal. I feel for him, I mean, uh, the other winning goal. Well, OG. Indeed, is that the only goal? Is that going to win this game? It's uh, a big burden for Rissa to take if it is, as uh, Chesterfield try and get forward again. Randall played that ball through, and here's Westcar. Craig Westcar now in on the goalkeeper. Yes! Westcar! Yeah, he's done it. Craig Westcar scores the second oh, goal for Chesterfield. That's it. And he's absolutely delighted. I'm sure the Spyrite Hordes are delighted as well in the crowd. The ball through from Mark Randall. He's come onto the pitch as a substitute for uh, Frank Musa. And he's played a brilliant ball through. Westcar's made a brilliant run, and we'll see at the moment on the replay. He's gone past McCormack there, who looks absolutely distraught now. Well, and this time, Westcar, he missed that one earlier on, but he's buried that one into the back of the net. And surely now, the Johnson Paints trophy is Chesterfield's. Here we go, it's uh, in the middle. Uh, comes to Randall, first time volley ball, and uh, Westcar runs from just inside his own half. This time, calmness personified, hits it a lot better contact, puts it just over the goalkeeper. And uh, well, he'll yeah. remember that for the rest of his life. The yeah, Chesterfield he's... fans go berserk. Oh, and look, he's a bit of love between Tommy and Sheridan and uh, everybody else there as well. There's Jamie and Mark Crossley joining in. And Paolo, welcome to Wembley. <laughs> the trip down the M4 won't be as good as the one up the M1. No, absolutely not. And uh, Swindon now, they certainly. It's be, surely now be on them to bounce back. They have to score twice in, in well, no time. Be, no time at all. Yeah. Uh, the cup, or the trophy, let's call it, is Chesterfield's. And look at the uh, Swindon fans there, heading for the exit already. Yes, look. indeed, the throw taken quickly now by Swindon Town once more. The ball to Joe De Vera. Challenge there goes in from Westcar, the scorer of that second goal. Coming across to cover his uh, own McCormack, he turns it all the way back to his goalkeeper, and Chesterfield will be quite happy with that. Bonringham plays it down. There it is, the final there's whistle. The final whistle, and Chesterfield 2, Swindon Town 0. Here at Wembley, Chesterfield are the 2012 winners of the Johnson Paints Trophy, a trophy for the Chesterfield Trophy Cabinet. Yes, it's a big trophy as well, so uh, we might have to alter the shell in a bit. Paolo Di Canio, well, he's, shown, he's been shown the difference between League Two and League One. There might only be one league position separating these two sides at the moment, but Chesterfield showed the class on the day and uh, deserve, thoroughly deserve their victory. Craig Westgar for that second goal. You see Mark Hallett, 13th in the all-time list of Chesterfield appearance makers, signalling the uh, 20,000. There's Jack back on the pitch. His uh, groin will not feel quite so bad just at the moment. It'll be interested to see if he uh, puts the armband on to go and collect the, uh, the cup. And here he is, look, uh, Jack Lester, coming up the steps.